In 2015, Janelle Monet re-released Hell You Tom Bell, a music video featuring the Wonderland Arts Society Collective, shouting the names of Black men and women murdered by police and vigilantes. Walter Scott, Jerome Reed, Philip White, Eric Gardner, Trayvon Martin, Sean Bell, Freddie Gray, Ayanna Jones, Sandra Bland, and more. They follow each name with say his name or say her name. This spawned the hashtag Say Her Name and They His Name, which have erupted on Twitter since 2015, as, as police brutality has continued. The music video ends with, silence is the enemy and sound is the weapon. The sound of their names has become the central point of protest in the Black Lives Matter movement. Saying their names is an act of rehumanizing Blackness within the public sphere. Each name carries a story, a family, and a lost future we are forced to reckon with when we hear and say their names. Through vocalizing names, racial stereotypes are challenged. Black men's and women's media portrayals reflect and project racial stereotypes, frequently focusing on Black men as violent or law-breaking, even if they have died innocent and unarmed. Don Cecil explains, these types of negative representations of the victims often result in the underlying suggestion that they are to blame for their own deaths. The dehumanization and vilification of black men is seeped into the historical race relations and depicted in many texts within the literary canon. Though choosing to address the racism present in classical through choosing to address the racism present in classical texts, educators and literary scholars continue to counter dehumanizing views of Black men. Shakespeare's plays have continued to be elevated as universal while ignoring many racist themes. However, plays such as Othello reveal how early modern racial concepts have affected modern race constructions. By reading Othello through the lens of Say Their Name movement, scholars contextualize the historical dehumanization of Black people. BLM has encouraged Americans at protests and in the media to say the names of Black men and women who have been murdered. Their names are important because they humanize each individual victim of police brutality. In Shakespeare's Othello, characters omit Othello's name, instead choosing his race as a signifier which undercuts and deprives Othello of his personhood. Transhistorically, names are omitted to devalue marginalized voices and spoken to draw attention to institutionalized racism. Scholars who discuss race in Othello have generally focused on the individual identity of Othello, the racial concept of being a Moor, and how Black Othello should be portrayed. This is often difficult because early modern Moorish definitions were unstable, vague, varied, inconsistent, and contradictory which led to a variety of Othello's racial representations. Some scholars still debate his blackness because Othello is not explicitly defined as a black amour. However, he was played by white men with blackened skin during and directly after Shakespeare's time, demonstrating that he is meant to be read as a black character. Both Iago and Othello connect Othello with blackness through their dialogue. Iago calls him Black Othello, and Othello states, happily, for I am Black. This Blackness carries societal assumptions of an evil or immoral nature that separate Othello from white characters. Notions of Blackness and Othello's lack of privilege frame how race affects the process of analyzing Othello. This is highlighted when Othello's name is intentionally omitted, emphasizing his race and reminding readers of his presumed guilt. Though it has not been connected to the Say Their Name movement, names have been analyzed within Othello. Edward Berry connects his analysis to Othello's racial alienation. Throughout the play, the naming of Othello keeps an audience subtly conscious of the impossibility of Othello's complete assimilation and gives his numerous self-references a special weight. Berry's analysis sheds light on how race labeling affects audiences' views of Othello and his assimilation into Venetian society. Othello's difference from white Venetians is constantly addressed through the racial terms used instead of his name. Barry asserts that Othello, the play, focuses on Othello's acceptance of the systematic oppression and structural racism within Venetian society. In a similar way, Black men in America are constantly bombarded with racist stereotypes and detrimental media representations affecting their own self-images. 
Detrimental media and literary representations are further damaging when names are explicitly omitted. Names are an integral part of a person's identity and carry connotations of the person's character. A fellow and the victims of police brutality should be known by their name instead of their racial category. And yet they are often minimalized into racial labels. Jane Pincher argues that names are the nucleus of our individual identity. Names are both identifiers and identity makers, which drive the actions of the individual. So if a fellow's name is used, it carries the meaning of his character and identity. And when it is not used, characters intentionally or subconsciously omit his individual identity from the conversation. Furthermore, names as a type of label can motivate individuals to behave in ways appropriate to that label. Name labels project stereotypes onto people affecting how others view them and how they view themselves. Within the fellow, he is racially labeled the more, identifying him as racially different from European immigrants to Venice. Even though Cassio is from Florence, he is not primarily identified by his country of origin. Race labeling is reserved for Othello, the more. As early as the title, race is prioritized in contextualizing Othello within Venice. Contrary to Shakespeare's white protagonists, such as Hamlet or King Lear, Othello is primarily described by his race instead of his social position. A survey of five Shakespeare anthologies Project Gutenberg, Penguin, Norton, Signet, and Barnes and Nobles show that most texts do not list the race of the main character if he is white, but they all specify Othello's race. His play is called The Tragedy of Othello, The Moor of Venice, but Hamlet is the tragedy of Hamlet, Prince of Denmark. This is also evident in early modern versions of Othello as revealed by Gerald Baker's analysis of archival records such as playbills or journals that discuss Othello. He indicates that general, generally performances use the title, The Moor of Venice, but readers discussing printed copies typically reference the title Othello or the tragedy of Othello. Baker's comparison associates viewing the play with viewing race. What people read was Othello, but what they saw was The Moor of Venice. Furthermore, the story Shakespeare based his play on was also titled The Moor of Venice, and The Moor was not given a name. Labeling Othello the more is a trend which derives from Shakespeare's source for Othello and continues in early performances. Even in the character list, Othello's primary signifier is his race, instead of his rank, position, or relation to another character. The same anthologies revealed similar racial patterns in the descriptions of the characters. In three of the five publications, Othello is described as the more, with no signifiers or descriptions. In Project Gutenberg and Barnes and Nobles, he is referred to as a noble Moor in the service of Venice or the Venetian state. Even in the descriptions where he is not merely the Moor, his race is listed before his military position. This ordering prioritizes his race over his social position and connects his identity to his race as a Moor instead of his position within the Venetian army, unlike the descriptions of white male characters in other tragedies. Surveying Hamlet, King Lear, and Macbeth reveals that the descriptions of their characters follow a rhetorical pattern, position of location. For example, King Lear is described as King of Britain in all five anthologies, and Hamlet is described as Prince of Denmark in four out of five anthologies. By listing the position first in the dramatis persona, the character are identified primarily by their military or royal position and then by the location where they live. By ignoring the race of each character, whiteness is assumed as a standard race for each character. White men's identities are connected primarily to their position instead of their race. Because of this, Othello must prove his position while white protagonists are presented as defined by their social positions. A comparison between Hamlet and Othello also reveals racial coding within Othello. In comparison with Hamlet, whose name is used 76 times in his text, Othello is named 24 times. In Hamlet, the word prince is used three times, but only once is it used to refer instead of Hamlet's name. Dane is used six times in Hamlet, but only three refer to him. Othello's race is seen as interchangeable with his name and subsequently his identity. However, whiteness is not viewed as a key identity marker. When late Labels are used for white men, they refer to their position. However, Othello is primarily referred to by his race. 
Within Othello, the word more is used 55 times, almost all of them in place of Othello's name. Of those 55 times, 42 of them are phrased the more with no adjectives, possessional or descriptive. His name is used about half as often as his race. And this is not counting the numerous racial slurs used to describe Othello. Bailey conducts a similar rhetorical analysis of the play and concludes. Among these characters, the naming of Othello becomes an exercise in reducing the individual to a class, the person to an object. Othello is a thing long before the image of his body in Desdemona's poisons sight. Characters who avoid the use of Othello's name objectify him and reduce him to the labels they choose to use instead. By removing his name from their dialogue, white characters demonstrate their privilege and power within Venetian society. Pilcher explains, bodies can become nameless when an individual's name is taken away as an expression of power and control. Othello's name is removed from him and his race is placed upon him as a label instead. The loss of dignity connected to the removal of names has, historic, has historical connections to other racially hegemonic relationships. Pilcher continues, anthropological literature on slavery points to the control of the powerful over the naming of the powerless. Likewise, in institutions like prisons and concentration camps, a strategy for dehumanizing and de-individualizing inmates is to take away their name and replace it with a number. Thus, dehumanization specifically of black bodies within American and European history has included race labeling and the removal of both names and individual identities. The labeling of Othello based on racialized terms is prominent as the play begins and highlights early modern racist views against Moors. Othello is referred to as the Moor eight times before his name is used, along with racist terms such as the thick lips, old black ram, and devil. His name is not introduced in the play until act one, scene three, when the Duke states, valiant Othello, we must straight employ you. Thus, playgoers are introduced to Othello and audibly reminded of his race multiple times through a motley of racialized visual imagery before they even hear his name. And his name is used by a politician who needs his labor. Nayani argues that these names other Othello, socially placing him in a subhuman category. Names given to black people in Zimbabwe and elsewhere in Africa, such as native, baboon, savage, kafir, were meant to characterize them as not only different, but also inferior or subhuman, and therefore not deserving of a treatment which is given to normal human beings. Moors were connected to ideas of monstrosity, bestial qualities, and sexual promiscuity or lack of purity. The reader is presented with Othello's race first, and therefore his first identity is a racial signifier that takes precedence over his name. The rhetorical structure of the play's title and Othello those character descriptions emphasize his race and suggest that his position in Venice needs justification. It is to single out the Moor as a subject whose position in Venice needs to be explained, as say the Florentine Cassio does not. By connecting him to his race first and then his name, the reader is left questioning how and why the Moor is in Venice. This curiosity throughout the play draws attention to his race. Before the audience hears any character say Othello's name, he has been depicted depicted as both an animal and a devil. These racial slurs demonstrate racist views of Moors in early modern England and echo, racist, echo the racist animalization of Black Americans that has persisted to this day. Rodrigo calls him the thick lips and Iago calls him an ass. Both terms begin to create a picture of Othello in the playgoer's mind because they have not physically seen him yet and do not know what he looks like. Iago continues this comparison when he analyzes both Desdemona and Othello in their marriage nuptials. Even now, now very now, an old black ram is tupping your white you. Arise, arise, or the devil will make a grandsire of you. Swarvik explains that the horse imagery in this scene introduces animality as a key object through which the play visualizes and dehumanizes its black protagonist. This quote connects racist animal references to racist stereotypes about black male sexuality. Because black skin was often associated with shamelessness and hypersexuality, the picture of black skin that emerged in the early modern period was one frequently associated with figures of animality. Animal imagery demeans Othello and excludes him from Venetian society because of his race. 
Furthermore, the racist associations have persisted into the contemporary era and reveal how early modern racist stereotypes have persisted and continue to demean Black men. Similar to how Othello's privilege is fragile because of his race, Desdemona's privilege is fragile because of her gender. J Jamie Paris explains that one of the ways that whiteness becomes visible is when we see characters lose the structural advantage of their whiteness. He argues that Desdemona loses her desired white womanhood because of rumors about her chastity. And this makes her morally black. Othello connects Desdemona's alleged sexual misconduct with blackness also. He states, her name that was as fresh as Diane's visage is now begrimed and black as mine own face. Othello positions Desdemona as having had a fresh name that was like Diane, a Roman goddess, and connects her name to European culture or whiteness. With her rumored sexual transgression, she is now black as mine own face. Desdemona becomes morally black in Othello's mind, and she is already viewed as socially black alongside him. Furthermore, she is no longer able to elevate his position in Venetian society. He believes she has betrayed him, but even more so, the woman who was supposed to elevate his name has now further blackened it. Barry explains, Othello projects his self-loathing upon her. In his diseased imagination, she becomes paradoxically the stereotype of the Moor, cunning, black, sexually depraved, and diabolic. Othello converts Desdemona into his alter ego, subjecting her to the same abuse he has endured. Desdemona's infidelity affects Othello's reputation because by losing her purity or chastity, and subsequently her image as a good wife, she loses part of her whiteness, which becomes fragile. One of the most prevalent names heard during the Say Their Name movement was Brianna Taylor, who was murdered in her home on March 13th, 2020. Her name became a rallying cry against no-knock warrants, police brutality, and racism, and she, has, and she became national news. Cecil explains that white and black men are generally portrayed differently in the media. The framing of the victimization of women ranges from ideal victim status to bad women who are to blame. Black women are more likely to fall on the latter end of the continuum, making them appear responsible for, the, responsible for their victimization. Though most news presentations portrayed Breonna Taylor as a victim, her death was often blamed on her association with men who were villainized and presented as criminals. They suggest that Taylor placed herself at risk by associating with a dangerous man. Like other women, she became a cautionary tale, warning women that they too might be victimized if they hang out with the wrong people. Both Brianna Taylor and Desdemona become cautionary tales. Brianna Taylor is a cautionary tale against dating criminals, and Desdemona is a cautionary tale of what happens to women who step out of their social and racial categories to marry a man who has been othered by society. Although Desdemona is not a Black woman, she has been othered as not white because of her connection to Othello and her loss of purity caused by her sin of miscegenation. Her victimhood is tied to her role in marriage to a Black man. She is to blame because she has chosen Othello. It is only after she has been absolved of her alleged sexual transgression that she returns to whiteness and death. Amelia states, Oh, the more angel she and you the Blacker devil. Othello is now perceived as Blacker because of his motorist actions and potentially because he has absorbed the Blackness he originally transferred onto Desdemona. Just like media portrayals of innocent Black women, the focus returns to the allegedly brutal Black man she is in a relationship with. If nothing can be found to incriminate the Black women, then the media seeks to place blame upon her by condemning her partner as a criminal. After Othello has been murdered, as Othello, after Othello has murdered Desdemona, socially and in his own mind, he transforms from Othello the general into Othello the more. Though there is no physical transformation, Othello no longer believes his position is stable. Othello's transformation is connected to the racial tension between identity and society. Society has projected racial stereotypes onto Othello through labeling him the more instead of using his name. Othello is unable to live as an upper class Venetian because society is constantly racially labeling and stereotyping him. He is both exotic, excitingly exotic and inherently evil. Barry argues that Othello sees himself as either an assimilable Venetian or a barbarian worthy of destruction and does not achieve a true sense of personal identity. 
This lack of personal identity drives his choices throughout the play as he seeks to counter the perceived barbarian within him. Once he can no longer see himself as an assimilable Venetian, he is left to consider himself a barbarian. After Desdemona's death, Othello is primarily referred to as the Moor, the slave, or the devil, instead of by his name. The characters who use these racialized labels instead of his name connect his violent actions to racial stereotypes. Only Ludovico and Othello use his name Reed Hoard explains that in early modern England, a man's name is what we would now consider a reputation. Othello loses the use of his literal name when he loses his honor or metaphorical name because other characters connect his violence to racial stereotypes. Both Othello and Ludovico reveal the dualism of self within Othello, reflecting how Venetian racial stereotypes have truncated his personality. Ludovico states, oh thou Othello that wrote so good. He states his name first and then draws attention to Othello's goodness that is allegedly no longer present within him. Ludovico implies that there was a good Othello, but he is no longer present because he has been a, replaced by a violent Moor. Othello also separates his identity from his name when he states, man but a rush against Othello's breast, and he retires. Where should Othello go, O cursed, cursed slave? With me, he devils. Othello speaks of himself in the third person as if he is no longer Othello and has lost connection to Venetian society, leaving him untethered to any location. Iago's manipulation has caused him to speak in his torturer's racist voice. Othello is no longer confident of his status as a Venetian insider, but has absorbed the racist social st structures. Though he does not assimilate to a Moorish identity, he has released the created image that he has come to know as Othello. He then reduces himself to the position of a slave and calls for himself to be whipped. He loses his identity along with his position because they are interwoven. He later states, that's he that was Othello, here I am. Again, separating who he is at the play's end from his name and built identity. Othello is unable to transcend society's racism and instead internalizes their animalistic and dehumanizing views about him. Before he commits suicide, he says, I took by the throat the circumcised dog and smote him thus. He speaks of himself in third person, again, rhetorically objectifying himself and then analyzing his identity, just as Iago and Rodrigo, other Othello by omitting his name and using animal labels, Othello absorbs their racist diatribes and speaks their words over himself. Unable to assimilate into Venetian society because of structural racism, he removes himself through death. Unlike Shakespeare's other racialized characters, Shylock and Aaron, Othello does not verbally object to their racist views and insults. Othello never defends his blackness, nor does he defend the religion or culture that lies behind him. Shakespeare does not give Othello the space to speak out pride for his blackness or argue against his oppressors. Instead, Othello succumbs to the verbal violence and manipulation leading to his suicide. Othello is fully isolated in his racial identity and his alienation limits his ability to take pride in his selfhood, selfhood as a Moor. Throughout the play, his name is omitted in dialogue, exacerbating his alienation and drawing attention to harmful racial stereotypes. Although Othello builds a reputation as a general and through his marriage, ultimately the institutionalized racism inhibits his ability to operate as an insider in Phoenician society. Unlike modern movements focused on black pride, beautiful natural hair and the value of black lives, Othello is alone. Black Lives Matter and Say Their Name are important because they emphasize the value of the Black experience and fight for valuing Black lives against systemic oppression. Furthermore, they unify marginalized voices to uplift each other. The community within Black Lives Matter and the allies who stand with them fight against dehumanization and institutionalized racism. We say their names to end oppression and violence against Black men and women. Thank you. Mm -hmm.